morning, everybody. I trust that you can hear me. You are welcome to this special program, um, Accessing Educational Funding. We pray it shall be an interesting moment for every one of us in Jesus' name. Can we just pray? Almighty Father, I want to thank you, God, for this privilege to be a partaker of this program. I want to thank you, God, for how far you've been helping schools thus far. Lord, we pray that as we are gathered here today, you will speak your mind to us. You open our eyes of understanding beyond what the speakers will speak. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Um, I'm going to hand over to the ACSI Nigerian Director, uh, Mrs. Adwaki Emiju, for our welcome. Mr. Adwaki you are welcome, ma'am. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Um, Good morning, ma'am. On behalf of the board and management of ACSI Nigeria, I'd like to welcome you all to this webinar. It's a special one. And I trust that it will be a rewarding time for us all. I acknowledge the presence of some of our governing board members, um, Barrister James Asen, I believe he's here. Pastor Mrs. Mkoyorapu, who will be speaking to us later as one of the speakers. Pastor Sumito Augusto, I believe we're going to hear her voice also. Mr. Emeka Ndu and um, others that may be joining us later. I want to also acknowledge the presence of our zonal coordinators from the different states. I won't be able to mention names because of time. All school owners, administrators, and all that have one thing or the other to do with education, I welcome you. I want to also welcome our speakers for today, Ms. Bumi Lawson, uh, Mrs. Alero Otobo, and like I said, Pastor Nkoyorapu. I appreciate your love for us, your love for ACSI. You've been following us up, you've been connecting with us, you've not left us alone. Yes, I know Pastor Nkoyo is on our board, but Ms. Bumi Lawson and uh, Mrs. Alero Otobo, they've said they have not left us. They've been watching us and connecting with us. We really appreciate your love and the time and sacrifice. We appreciate your passion. And that's why you are here with us today. It's a sacrifice of your time. We thank you. They'll be introduced later. We also appreciate the support of SCMB and all that supported and encouraged us in prayer in all that is happening today and that has been happening and will still happen for us as ACSI Nigeria. Our theme for this uh, assessing educational finances. This issue of financing of educational uh, institutions and education related organizations has been a major concern to us in SSI Nigeria. And uh, we're glad that this is coming up at a time like this when it's become more crucial. The important thing for us is that whatever you listen to, whatever you pick today, you will use. And uh, don't throw it away. Don't say, well, it's, this is not the time to talk about financing. We have said in our webinars that we should look beyond the present. We should key into what God is going to do, even with our schools and through our schools. So whatever we learn should be put into use so that our schools will flourish. That's our key issue in SSI Nigeria, that our schools will flourish. Our mission as SSI all over the world is to enable Christian educators and Christian schools worldwide to effectively prepare students for life. And when we say for life, there are two types of life that they should occupy here on earth in all fields of life, all areas that they're going to be in. And then they should have eternity in focus. That's why we run Christian schools. That's why ACSI exists. I welcome all SSI school members. 
I welcome non-members. I welcome especially those who are joining us for the first time for our, on our webinars. We've had a series of webinars that have been so, so, I mean, impactful. And I trust that this would not be less. You're going to have a lot to gain, a lot to learn, and a lot to use even in your various schools. Welcome and be richly blessed. God bless you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much. That's the director of ACSI in Nigeria. She's also the chairperson of ACSI Africa. You are welcome. I'm just listening to this brief announcement before I read the profile of the speakers. Um, please, you can write that there'll be three sessions. And if you have questions, please write your questions on the chat. I have two of my staff that will be monitoring that and be rest assured all your questions will be attended to. Um, you can also introduce yourself if you are joining us for the first time on the chat. We'd like to have your information. I also want to especially welcome our sponsors as well. Uh, the three main speakers are Ms. Ms. Lawson, Ms. Alero Aida Otobo, and Pastor Mrs. Nkoyo. We have sent their profile to you already, but permit me to just read briefly about, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just say one or two things about them. I'm going to start with Ms. Bumi Lawson. Ms. Bumi Lawson is the pioneer managing director and chief executive officer of Edvin Microfinance Bank Limited. Edvin Price is served as the first specialized education microfinance bank with unique and well-researched products and services tailored to cater for the needs of customers and the education ecosystem. Edvin Microfinance Bank, under the eminent leadership of Bumi Lawson, officially commenced operation in April 2019 with its, with its registered office in Suru Leri, Lagos State. And she has a projection to grow financially solutions in Africa. Its shareholders are Gray Matters Capital, an investment company based in USA. Um, we have sent the profile to you, and by God's grace, I know she's a woman of repute. You'll be blessed hearing from her today. Our second speaker today, is also Mrs. Alero Aida Otobo. She's a highly respected education reformer speaker. She's an author. She's a social entrepreneur with a massive agenda for social change. She is the founder of Incubator Africa. You're also welcome, ma'am. Our third speaker today, uh, who we also round up the program, um, she's a lawyer. Pastor Nkoyo Rapo. She's a lawyer, an author, and pastor. She's passionate about education and has a strong desire to support the less privileged. This she gives expression to is through through uh, Beltasar Child Support Agency. She serves on the governing board of ACSI Nigeria. She's also the wife of the senior pastor of this present house. Pastor Mrs. Nkoyo, you are also highly welcome. Uh, I also want to recognize the presence of Mr. Andrew, representing FCMB on the platform. You are all welcome. Without wasting time, we'll just go to listen to the first speaker. I know she's prepared for us. I'm privileged to see our slide before now. I know it's going to be a moment that you will remember forever. I want to welcome Ms. Lawson for our presentation. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you um, very much. Thank you for that. Indeed, I'm, I'm honored to be here. Um, I have been actually, as you had so I think spoken earlier, and I've been following the association. I think I met the representative of the association at a um, Tosing conference. And since then, you know, I, even on the WhatsApp group, I've been following the activities of the group. And, you know, I'm very, very passionate about um, education, which is what led us to start off Edfin Microfinance Bank, the very first specialized 
microfinance bank focusing on um, education finance because we believe that if we focus on providing finance to our, um, to our schools and the education sector as a whole, more and more people would have access to quality education. So we are about providing access as well as improving the quality of education. And we believe that if we provide adequate funding, appropriate funding, schools will be able to offer better learning outcomes and um, people, even from those, especially those from low income households, will be able to access good quality education. So I will briefly want to share with you what we have done so far, what Edfin is about and how you can access funding from Edfin Microfinance Bank. Initially, we were actually also going to talk about accessing government um, funding, but um, unfortunately before the event, that closed because we also had webinars encouraging schools to apply for those SME uh, loans. But as we come to hear about any other concessionary loans, I particularly am an advocate for ensuring that schools actually have access to all these con concessionary loans. So I want to thank you all for um, giving me this opportunity to talk today, especially Pastor Rapu, um, who spoke to me and the chairman of the association as well. So quickly going into um, the presentation. It's basically, I'm going to try and make it short. Um, the um, slides will be shared with everyone. So additional information that you want about specific products are all contained in the slides. And um, also our contact numbers and emails would also um, be shared. So Edfin, we started almost going on two years now. Sometimes it amazes me that time flies so fast. Um, our website, www.edfin.com, has more information about who we are. Um, so in Nigeria, we're the very first specialized education finance bank. Our major shareholder, Great Matters Capital, is Indian-based, I mean, US-based, but has significant investments in India. They started the education finance industry in India, starting off with the Indian School Finance Company. Today, you have 14 such banks specialized only on providing funding for the education sector. And we all know that in India, the education system grows rapidly and especially at the basic level, they are able to reach all, almost all the children. I think they have one of the lowest out of school um, rates, you know, so Lagos and Nigeria can learn a lot from them. So as I've said, we provide funding to the education ecosystem. So it's not only schools, but everyone in the education ecosystem. And the reason is that we believe that if you have access to quality, education, we would realize human potential. And I was emphasizing that in a, a mission statement because, you know, I, you sort of get frustrated with the word potential because it keeps saying Nigeria has potential, 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 but it never realizes that potential. So we are about ensuring that we realize the potential of our human capital. So our mission really is to provide financial service to the education ecosystem for the realization of human capital. And we want to be globally recognized for education and financial solutions in Africa. What do we offer? So I would first talk about our loan products. We offer everything that a bank offers, um, from savings to loans to payment services, everything that, you, you, that a typical bank offers. It's only that we provide those offerings to the education sector. And we've tailored those loans so that they are appropriate for the education sector. So the first product I want to talk to you about is what we call Edfin Wise. Edfin Wise is a product targeted at enabling parents and students pay tuition fees. So we focus on tuition fees if you want to go for professional level all the way to nursery school. So if you are is a nursery, primary or secondary, is the parent that Kali applies or even university. But for professional institution, even children who want to study abroad, we will partner with organizations that offer that. And through those schools are able to offer everything wise. So one area that we, we notice is that schools typically are not able to collect all their school fees 
on the very first day of school. Typically schools, um, I mean, as you know, give, um, you're supposed to pay your school fees timely. So, but most parents are unable to do that, especially parents, um, low income households. So they will either have to, you know, negotiate with you or, you know, on payment. But if you have parents that are able to um, get everything wise, you are short of more of your tuition being paid up, up front. So that helps you in terms of the investment you want to carry out for your school. So we, for everything wise, while parents can apply one-on-one, -on -one, we typically advise that the school signs up an MOU, Memorandum of Understanding with us. So basically the school tool helps us in assessing which students need loan. They have to confirm that yes, they've been offered a place or they're a student of your school and that um, they are doing well in school. They, are not, they haven't been missing classes, all those kind of things. And then um, if for instance, when we give out the loan, there's a default, we also want the school to help us write to the parent to say, oh, you haven't paid the loan yeah, and so on and so forth. So typically that's what we do for everything wise. Then everything business is actually focused at suppliers and vendors to schools. So if for instance, you want to um, re do a um, renovation, you will need um, office, I mean, school equipment, chairs, tables, and things like that. And because maybe the timing, your cash flows are inadequate to pay, the business and the vendor can actually come to us. We finance that um, project. And then over time, as you repay the vendor, the vendor repays us. Then we also have what we call Edfin Flow. Edfin Flow is basically working capital. So typically, for instance, during holidays, schools are not really earning any school fees. So you are stretching what cash you've had with you. Um, and therefore you need funding to cover working capital that's pay school fees, maybe some renovation, pay your rent and so on and so forth. That's what Edfin Flow is for. And then everything assets is for you to directly buy um, equipment for your school. As we typically focus more on um, um, technology um, equipment. So especially now during COVID, for instance, you want to start up a remote learning school. So you need devices for the students. We want to provide data and so on. So we use everything assets to fund that. So, um, under each one, we have what we call value added services. So we feel that schools don't only just need money, but they also need support to be able to provide um, proper um, learning outcomes in their schools. So for instance, one of the key constraints that we've seen with um, parents accessing remote learning is because they don't have money to pay for data, they don't have money to pay for devices. So we can bundle all of that in the Edfin Wise, which I told you is about to show. So it's not only just the school fees. So we actually have a partnership with MTN where the data bundle, they, where they, <clears throat> they've allowed us sell it at less than 50% of what you will get um, outside. So bulk bundling. So when schools buy those bundles, they can actually then reallocate or share that data to teachers and students. So instead of the parent having to worry about how do I get the cost of data, you've already added it into the school phase. And from there, the school can actually allocate to all the students. We also have insurance so that if um, the student is in your school and anything happens to the parent or the guardian, the um, insurance then pays the school fees to the finish um, their school for that year. And so, so there are different things that we sort of um, package. We've done a lot of webinars also to help schools, um, you know, link them up with both funders, but also technical expertise that they may require in their organization. For instance, that's one of the things we've done with the learning management software that now reduces it to you just paying a monthly fee instead of the cost of acquiring the whole technology. So there are other things that we also do now, especially for COVID, we are also packaging um, loans to help you get your school ready post COVID. So you, if you need pipe bomb water, the hand wash buckets and um, things like that, the sanitizers that you need around your school, because 
you can't just buy only one. You need one at the entrance, in blocks of classrooms, in play areas, and so on and so forth. So there's a cost for getting back to school. So we also provide funding for that. So our very first product that we uh, packaged for COVID especially was to bundle remote learning solutions together. So in that, you get access to a device, you get the data, you get content already preloaded, you get a school management software. The school management software enables you to get students registered um, onto your school. You can track who has paid school fees, what teachers and classes and so on. And then we also have solar lamps so that um, parents don't say, oh, there was no light and so on. They can use the solar device and plug it directly to the phone to charge. All of this, um, you could actually offer it at 5,000 um, Naira per month per child to, um, to, your, uh, to the school. So we just did a breakdown of what those components are. The other one, as I talked about the tuition loan, what do we really need? We just need for the students to have admission in the school. Parents should have a source of income that we can look at. And typically they can get loans of up to 5 million Naira because that's, we increase it to 5 million so that it covers international um, schools as well, so that you are able to pay your school fees. So I'm just going to briefly run through this. This is the data package I was talking about. It has validity of 30 days. So when you compare one gig of 30 days, I get retail. It is more than twice the price that you have here. And then the business loan and all of this. So you're getting all of these slides. It also includes some of the requirements that we ask for. Typically, the school should have been in existence for at least 12 months. We must have done a full year session so that we're able to see how many students you have, what school fees you've been, um, you've been charging. And then um, we don't also say you must have full approval, but you should have your name search done so that that way we know that you're not changing your name and so on and so forth. Um, so we ask for all your CAC certificates, the MEMAT, 12 months bank statements, KYC, also a guarantor. So like the association could actually act as guarantor for um, those loans, or you find an individual um, guarantor. It could also be someone else who owns a school who then guarantees your loans. Um, so, so far, COVID really has um, affected how, of course, how schools continue to run. Um, UNESCO estimates almost 40 million um, school, schools and um, school children in Nigeria are affected by this. So parents are hesitating to pay school fees. So, but one of the things we did, especially for those who have existing loans with us, is to reschedule their loans. So we are get in, um, given a 150 days, that's almost three months moratorium for them to pay. So that time was at March. The next payment typically will be due in September. So at that time, we were so sure schools will be back in September. It's um, surprising that we are still at a stage where we are uncertain about school um, resumption. So this basically tells you more about even though schools are not in, um, in session, physically in session, you need to continue learning because for us, we believe that it, it is about the quality of education. If children don't continue to learn, then they forget what they have um, learned so far. So we need to be able to ensure that they continue to do that. And we support um, schools to be able to do that. And this system that we have actually provides a full digital school. And as I said, it's around 5,000 to 6,000 per month, depending on if you want premium, you want to put your own content. And we partnered with MCN Rodokate, which Lagos State also uses and also has the NERDC approval on their content. So you don't have to worry about your own content, although you can also add in your own content. So these are our team members, myself as the CEO, the two, um, my two key staff who actually focus on the schools, the, Mr. Stephen Mola and I, Adewali, I'm not sure, some of you may have met them. We are located in Surulere, although at the moment we are still working from home, but we run skeletal services, so our office is still open. Our email, if you want to, any additional information is contact us at edfinmfb.com. 
and our phone numbers is easy to remember, I hope. 6334 is the education system in Nigeria. 0809 is Niger. 454 So edfin.com. So thank you very much. I'm sure there have been questions because I can see the speak the chat box flashing. So, but if you have any questions, I will take them. The moderator will let me know which questions um, to answer. Thank you very much for your time and listening. Thank you very much, Ma. We really appreciate you. Um, we're going to take all the questions together later. So without wasting time, we want to call on the second speaker, Mrs. Alero Ayeda Otobo. And I trust that we'll be blessed. Mr. Alero, you are welcome, ma'am. Um, Sarah, can you please unmute? Um, so the host is not allowing. Okay, I've done that. Go ahead, ma'am. Thank you very much. A very good, I think it's still in the morning. Good morning to everyone. It's such a pleasure to be here. I'd like to start by thanking very warmly your um, for Mrs. Adun Akinyemiju, the chairman of, of, of ACSI. You've been doing an incredible work. And I believe you're also for Africa. That's a major assignment. Uh, and then also, I'd lo love to also thank um, Mrs. Ukoyorapu, who is now on the board. She uh, made sure that I, I understood my assignment for this morning. And I'd like to recognize people who have keyed in from all over Nigeria. It's such a pleasure to welcome you from Abuja, Ekiti, Potakot, Ibadan, Makodi, and many other locations. Um, it is my prayer that you do not regret your attendance. I'd like to thank Bumi Lawson for that wonderful presentation. We all learned a lot. We know what to do now. We have an understanding of what is available. And that, that, that's, that's, that's great. Thank you, Bumi. Um, Edwin is doing a great work. You are truly a pioneer and a trailblazer. First of all, I'd like to start by saying I do not have a PowerPoint presentation. And this is the first that, this is the first that's happening. It's the first time that it's happening to me. This is the first time that I'm doing this. I haven't done this for a very long time. I can't remember the last time I spoke without a PowerPoint presentation. So if I have withdrawal symptoms, do you understand? What I have are words this morning. And that's the instruction I was given. And I'm praying that the words will activate, they will catalyze, they will shape and they will ignite. These are going to be words of encouragement to achieve these four things. And it's funny, when I got the words activate, shape, ignite, I realized that that was actually ACSI. It was not intentional, but it was surprising that that's what came through and came out. I've been asked to speak on the kingdom mandate. And I thought very, very carefully about the kingdom mandate, about, about what the message was to be to all of you. And the first place I went to was Genesis 1. 26 to 28. We're all familiar with it. The message translation is what I'd like to highlight. And I'm going to explain how it all ties with, with accessing funds for education. One of the biggest lies is that you need money to start a business. You actually don't need money to start a business. What you need is to be able to tap into the other currencies of the kingdom. And I'm going to close by talking about the eight currencies of the kingdom. Money is just one. So when you want to access financing for, for education or access education, educational financing, it's important that we begin to think broader than we are currently thinking. 
going way beyond um, money and tapping into the wealth of the other currencies that are available. But don't let me go ahead of myself. Let's first of all look at the first scripture. And I, I have permission to, to, I, to just cite, I'm just going to cite two, two, three scriptures, no more than that. Um, but I think it's important to root what we're doing, kingdom mandate, your kingdom mandate, our kingdom minded on earth and in education. You're running your Christian school, not because you want to set up a school, but because you have an understanding that you have been called to raise a generation of young people that will be like Jesus. I'm assuming that that's why you are a member of ACSI. I'm assuming that's why you set up a Christian school. So the question, I have two key questions after I read the scriptures that I'm going to ask you is, 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 are you fulfilling that mandate? Are you fulfilling your assignment, your kingdom assignment? But first, the scripture. Genesis 1, 26 to 28 reads, God spoke, let us make human beings in our image. Let's make them reflecting our nature, image and nature. So they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, the entire earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of the earth. God created human beings. He created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. He created them male and female. God blessed them. And then he gave them this instruction, prosper, reproduce, fill the earth, Take charge, be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air, for every living thing that moves on the face of the earth. New King James Version says, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the seas, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Prosper, reproduce, fill, take charge, be responsible. Those are the key words. So every one of you that have set up a Christian school, you're meant to be raising products, citizens that Nigeria will point to and say they are subduing, they are having dominion. That Nigeria will be able to say they are taking charge, they are taking responsibility. The question I have is, are you raising products that are doing this? Are they doing it at an individual level? Are they doing it at a collective level? Can we point to the products of ACSI and say, wow, there goes a product having national influence, changing their sector, impacting their spheres. Is that happening? And I, mean, and I need us to answer this question truthfully. So as you reflect on these questions, I have another big question on my mind. The um, question I had on my mind is, why am I speaking to you today? I, ask, I had to ask God that question. I said, why are you asking me to speak? For what purpose? For what reason? If they need to know about just financing and all that they require, Bumi can be the keynote speaker we have a workshop, we learn all the products that are in the banking industry and we will close. But there's more. And it's that more that I want us to explore. And I want to give a caveat. I'm just here to activate. I'm here to provoke. I'm here to ignite. And it is my prayer that today all that happens, at least one will happen to you. And it is my prayer that you'll be grateful that you joined this webinar. The second big question I want to ask you is, why do you need financing? Is it to meet your daily expenses? Is it to reposition you post-COVID? Or is it for you to fulfill your heavenly vision and your kingdom mandate, your kingdom assignment? Because if it is to just fulfill expenses and you continue fulfilling expenses, paying your expenses, you're not going to get as much as you need. Trust me, because what God funds is vision. 
And many of you may be saying, oh, but we have vision. I, we know how, we have a vision statement. Uh, people, yes. But what is your vision statement? Does that vision statement align with the vision for Nigeria? Because you have been located in Nigeria for a reason. And God has asked you to establish a school in Nigeria for a reason. You are an association, Association of Christian Schools International. Each one of your products should look like who? Jesus. Not just Jesus the Lamb. Not just Jesus the kind soul. But Jesus the revolutionary. Jesus the change agent. Jesus that knows how to turn things upside down, inside out. Jesus the reformer. Jesus, who is unconventional, uncommon, and unusual. So your people, your graduates, your products, are they unconventional? Are they uncommon? Are they unusual? Or do they look like any other product from any other school in Nigeria? These are questions that heaven is asking you. I'm not asking these questions. I'm just a vessel carrying the message. The next set of questions, what impact are your students having? What differences are they making? Can the nation feel their impact? Can the nation say that there goes an ACSI graduate? Why do you need funding to meet your expenses or to raise a generation of nation builders? That's what God wants to fund. That's what God wants to finance. But why am I asking all these questions? I would like to give you some history. Let's start with some history. I'd like to give you some history. And the history, I'm going to go way back to the public schools in England. And you know why I'm going to the public schools in England? Because they are recognized worldwide that the products of public schools have great influence across the United Kingdom and different parts of the world. Research has shown that products of public schools in England enter into the top echelon of parliament, of the pub business sector. They enter, into, they enter into every level of society and they disrupt and they shake. Public school alumni have a significant influence over the United Kingdom's professional and social elite. And why is that important? Because when they, was, when they started, and up till now, a majority of public schools are affiliated and they were established by a Christian denomination, most of them by the Church of England. In some cases, Roman Catholic, in others, the Methodist, in a few, they're non-denominational Christian organizations. Only a very minimal, small number are inherently circular. A majority are rooted in Christian principles, Christian culture. My children went to one of the leading, all three of them actually, went for A-levels in England. And when you walked into Chelsea Ladies College, you could still feel the Christian component spirit behind that school. Let me give you some more evidence of why this is important and why we have to start thinking differently. There's a 2012 study published by the Sutton Trust, Trust that noted that 44% of over 7,000 individuals whose names appeared in the birthday list of the Times, the Sunday Times, are all the independent. And you know, for your name to be listed, you're in the upper class. Uh, or you have somebody of great influence for your names to be listed, your birthday list in the Times, the Sunday Times, and Independent. The study showed that practically 44%, almost 50%, across all sectors, politics, business, arts, and forces, were all educated at public schools. Another study in 2014 showed that 71% of senior ju judges, 62% of senior armed forces, 
55% of Whitehall permanent secretaries and 50% of members of the House of Lords have all been to public schools, privately educated. Why am I highlighting this? What are the percentages for ACSI? Are you tracking them? How many of your graduates are in National Assembly or aspiring to be National Assembly? How many of them have influence as CEOs of corporate Nigeria? How many of them are in middle management? How many of them are running social enterprises of, so, of great impact? How many do you know? Are you tracking? Because if you don't track, if you don't measure, you have no idea what impact you're making. God, at the end of every single day of creation, stepped back, monitored, evaluated, and declared this is good. What are you declaring this is good over? If you're not tracking, what are you declaring? Is it the single one that says, oh, they got six A stars and they are now, no, what impact did the six A stars have 10 years later? It's time to stop tracking academic excellence alone. It is time for a higher level of purpose. And so my challenge this morning is don't just come together for a religious identity. Perhaps it is time to come together for a national development identity. It is time for your products to look, to feel, and to think different. You've got to brand them, not because they are religious, not because they're spiritual, but because they're movers and shakers with a national purpose, because they have a national mission, they have a national assignment. Great nations are shifted by people who have a mindset that is rooted in the kingdom. The United Kingdom was shaped in the 19th century by a group called the Clapham Group. And out of that group came William Wilberforce and other great men and women. They, had the, they, were, they were in the parliament, they had great influence. ACSI, where's your Clapham Group? Where? So the message this morning is that an urgent mindset shift. God is not going to fund your expenses. He wants to fund his vision. And his vision is a new Nigeria. And a new Nigeria can only emerge by a people who come together to build, to establish, to shape, to create, to birth a new Nigeria. So that urgent mindset shift, let me tell you some of the things we need. Your children have to come out feeling responsible for crafting the new narrative for Nigeria. They have to come out with a nation building mindset, a future ready mindset, a giving mindset, because Jesus gave, 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 and kept giving. They have to come out with a solution provider's mindset, a reformer's mindset. And as I close, I want to say two things. Your children have to have four faces. Yesterday I spoke somewhere else and I had three faces that I shared. This morning I thought, hmm, there's a fourth face. So I'm getting a little bit more because there's always more. The first face that your children have to have is an, the face of the ego. They have to be visionary. They have to have the ability to see into the future and know how to pull that future into now because the now belongs to those who can see into the future. What we are doing today, Zoom, is because some people saw into the future and built Zoom. Those who, succeed, who succeeded during lockdown are those who were already operating in the future. Those who struggled were those who had no technology. There's something I said, think. The acronym think means T for technology. K at the end is knowledge. I won't go into detail because that's not about it. But that, the first is the visionary mindset. You have to become an imaginal leader. Imaginal leader, see into the future and they pull that future into now. So you've got to have a curriculum that pushes and drives imaginal leadership. They have to have the face of a lion. Ha, Kalerede, oh, sorry. They have to have a face of a lion. They have to be bold and they have to be courageous. Bold and courageous because they are taking territories and they're taking their trailblazers, their history makers. They have an understanding that if they do not do 
what they are called to do. Nobody else will do it. That's a history maker. If today, Bumi Lawson is done doing earth pain, there may not be any earth pain. That's what she's wired to do. God trained her to establish earth pain. Trained her in action so she had the credibility to do earth pain. If she came out and started doing that, people were wondering what she's doing. But because she has a track record, she's been successful. Ten years, she laid something down. People can pay attention to everything. So your students, and I'm, your students, your teachers, have to be prepared for the future. They have to be infused with the DNA of the lion, with the face of the lion. Because we need both courageous people to take Nigeria out of where it is now and defy the status quo and take us into a future. That's what God wants to finance. He's not interested in your expenses. If you give him the big picture, he will take care of your expenses. The third face is the face of the butterfly. You are probably expecting the ox. It's not the ox, it's a butterfly. And that's transformational leadership. There's a whole new world opening up around transformational leadership. Harvard has a course on transformational leadership. By the time Harvard is Having a course on something, trust me, is important. And transformational leaders know how to take situation circumstances. They know how to transform it so that the difference between the old and the new is like the difference between the caterpillar and the butterfly. You don't want people who are thinking incremental. You want people who are thinking transformational. It comes at a price. It is painful, but they're willing to pay that price. That's how nations are shifted. People who pay the price, people who defy status quo, people who are history makers. And the last phase, I, could, I can, for each one of these phases, you can give me 30 minutes, but we don't have time. So I'm going to trust that heaven and the Holy Spirit is, 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 is expanding the message inside of you. And the fourth is man, the face, the man called Jesus. We have to reflect him, his nature, his character. And there are three C's if you want to look like Jesus. Character and competence at the first two. He was highly competent. He was good at what he does and what he did. The third C, in the past I've thought collaboration, thought some people would say capacity, but to, today, this afternoon, the third C is change. They are purveyors of change. I like that word, purveyor. They're carriers. They transmit change. The man that is like Jesus, that your product should look like, are men that take responsibility. And I'm using men in a generic way, men and women that take responsibility. They take responsibility for what is wrong. They take responsibility for what needs to be corrected. They have a conviction. Your, your students have to look just like the man Jesus. And as I round up, I'm going to say, what are we looking for? We're looking for flames of fire, people that are going to be so much on fire, you can't stop them. You know, fire is unstoppable. Once you light a fire and you do not have enough water on you, that fire will consume your house. Do you know there was a fire burning in California for months, in Australia for weeks? Weeks! Because fire is powerful, all consuming. If every one of your students became flames of fire, Nigeria will not be the same because they'll have a takeover mentality. And everywhere they go will not remain the same. So that now brings us to the concluding remarks. Financing education, accessing financing to education. Now that you have an understanding of what the heaven is demanding, heaven is demanding. Now let's go back and look at the currencies. There are seven currencies. Again, I don't have time. Oh, I've, I've, I think I've been lost. No, I can't see myself again. Can you oh, still yeah, hear I'm me? Here. Okay, can I'm I here. continue? Okay. I continue. We can hear you. My, my executive assistant is saying, time out, time out. Can I have permission to take five more minutes? Because I have to take permission. Can um, I have to right right five minutes? Thank it's you right so now. much. So the seven, the seven currencies, the eighth is money. The first three, you, all of you in this room understand. The first is faith. The second is obedience. The third is favor. When you operate in faith, faith, to do the impossible, you have to have faith. It is impossible to please God without faith. 
It is impossible to do what it's going to ask you to do without faith. Many of you is going to ask you to collaborate with others. Because many of you, you know the word, you're saying that you're playing small. You are too small. You are too small. You are too small. You are too small. You need some of you to lift your eyes up and to think bigger. The second is obedience. As you have faith, obedience to his instructions. And he's giving some of you instructions right now. Then favor will follow as you, as you implement his instructions. The fourth is where I want to just want to pay attention to relationships. The power of relationship to create wealth is unbelievable. I sit on several boards, social enterprises. I'm amazed at what relationships, what the, the money that relationships can pull in. There's a particular board I, I, I sit on. One individual just decided that I like the vision and I like relationship to the founder of Teach for Nigeria pulled in $10 million. Another organization said, I'll match that $10 million. Two, one organization, one million and one, but Teach for Africa, $20 million. Why am I mentioning? Because they got the vision right. It didn't come in the first year. It didn't come in the second year. It came in the third year when it was clear that they were walking the vision and they understood the vision. Relationships. Relationships with, your, with, your, with, your, with the parents of your children. Many people are struggling. How will our parents pay the school fees that they need to pay? But I've also heard the good news from many schools that have tightened the relationship with their parents and they're bringing their parents alongside of them and they are paying relationships. The fifth, sixth, and seventh, very quickly, time, space, and the seventh is ideas. Time, I'm just going to leave your imagination to think about what time will do. Space, I will leave imagination. Space, the power of space is what we have seen during lockdown. Emptiness spoke loud and clear across the entire world. There's power in emptiness. Emptiness makes you think. T-H-I-N-K. T for technology, H for hard work, I for innovation, N for network, and K for knowledge. It made all of us think, acquire knowledge, strip, we stripped all unnecessary things out of the equation. We created space for the new. And then ideas, let your ideas begin to reveal the new identity and it's a national development identity. ACSI, wake up. It's ACSI, arise. You are not meant to be playing small. Your, your graduates are meant to be noteworthy history makers, undeniable nation builders. I hope you can still hear me. Come here. Yes, we can hear you. you can. Yes, we can my hear laptop, you. My laptop is playing games, so I don't know, but thank you. And finally, the key, as I was running up this thoughts, and I'm going to get spiritual here. Now, this is the second scripture he said I should tell you. The Lord says, and spoke to us in Horeb, saying, Deuteronomy 1, 6 to 8, you have dwelt long enough at this mountain, ACSI. You have dwelt long enough. Turn and take your journey and go to the mountains of the Amorites, to the mountains of the nations, to all the neighboring places in Ekiti, in Ibadan, in Makodi, in Potakot. Go to all, to the lowland, to the south, to the sea coast, to the land. See, I have set that land before you. Break out, break in. Go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them and their descendants after them. And we are the descendants. Receive your new land. Begin to use all the currencies in the kingdom that money may flow in to your organization. Activate those currencies. And if you're, and many of you are already working in those currencies, but have a deeper understanding of them so that they will speak for you, so that they will attract greatness to you. It's time to advance. Stop thinking small. Time to expand. For some of you, it's time to grow through collaboration. It's time for the new ACSI. It really is time.
God bless you all. Thank you for listening. Wow. And I'm deeply grateful for the opportunity to serve and to speak. Thank you. Wow. Thank you very much. We are blessed. It's time to arise. <laughs> it's time to collaborate. It's time to think, think, and think. Thank you very much. Um, before we go to questions and answer, we would like to uh, give the privilege to our sponsor. If you realize when we first advertised this program, um, participants are expected to pay a sum of 5,000. But this has been bankrolled by FCMB. So we just want to give them an opportunity to say one or two things to us. And if you have a question as well, or if you have questions for them, you can also ask maybe later after we are done with the questions we have. So I have the pleasure to welcome Mr. Andrew. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Andrew is uh, one of the representatives of FCMB. Mr. Andrew, please. Yeah. You can unmute yourself. And please speak. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you. And on behalf of FCMB, I want to say thank you to everyone for giving us the opportunity uh, to attend this program and also talk to you. And um, it's been wonderful. I think um, um, the last speaker, Mr. Salero, has done justice to what um, FCMB will want to say. And um, the key thing there is collaboration. And so um, my few minutes with you is just to say, <clears throat> in FCMB, we see collaboration. We see collaboration because uh, we've understand and we've seen that um, the typical Nigerian parent is so concerned about the education of his children or his child. Uh, and to them, they just feel here. How will I ensure that my child gets the best education? At the same time, too, at the end of the day, he stands ahead of others. And so <clears throat> what we've done over the years in FCMB is to seek out collaboration with institutions that can advance education for us, that can also provide the best education that is possible for the Nigerian child. Uh, don't want to speak about the products. Uh, I think... Um, uh, Mrs. Bumilan has already uh, talked about um, the products from the financial side. So I would just be speaking about the collaboration. So we see collaboration with schools. We see collaboration with your bodies. They definitely because the questions are out there. Parents need answers. They are still asking that question. What school? What education? Uh, today, uh, I remember we had uh, that discussion with a parent and he said um, years ago when he was growing up, the dormitory was the leveler. The dormitory then, he could meet um, a politician's child and everything. But today, the leveler is you know, the quality education outside Nigeria. But that narrative needs to change. And that narrative is what um, Mrs. Alera has spoken to today. How do we change that narrative so that in Nigeria here, we have the best education being provided to these kids. And so uh, in the last few months, we've done partnership with various institutions. Uh, we've started a collaboration with PASNA now, an online um, uh, edtech that provides you no know, past questions to kids. Uh, also, we have uh, a partnership with another educational body, edtech, that provides resource on library then kids can as well um, go to the various library, e-library, and see educational materials that they can learn. Uh, COVID-19 has given us, uh, or rather changed the way things are right now. Uh, online or uh, e-learning has now become the end thing. Uh, would, that, would that change? We don't think so. I think um, it would advance, it would um, further cement the way we've done our offline education. So in just to, in a nutshell for FCMB, we have the educational advisory services and what's the educational advisory services? It's just seeking collaboration whereby we be an ecosystem whereby the bank with your body, with schools can as well provide educational materials, educational assistance to parents and education related uh, information to parents and kids as it were. So I just, um, just to 
rounding up as what uh, Mrs. Alera said, collaboration. Let's collaborate. Uh, the bank is open to listen to you in areas that we can collaborate. I do know that uh, in some discussions that are happening in the tech world, people are now saying, look, what will be the job or what will be the skill set that be required in the future? So you see kids going into digital technology, kids advancing into the science space and all that. So these are things that we as a bank, we want to collaborate with you as well. Being a Christian institution, a Christian body, how do we ensure that we put it side by side, the Christianity and also issues about the digital world, ensuring that science, technology, engineering and mathematics are well championed and promoted by your bodies like you. So that is what um, SMB has to offer today. And uh, we are very open uh, to this collaboration. We are very open to building a partnership in such a way that every Nigerian benefits, every Nigerian gets quality education and the right education. So thank you very much for this time and I wish you all a successful meeting. Thank you very much. Um, I have Sarah and did Mr. Um, Dile Obuleye, they helped me to compile the questions. Um, we have the phone numbers of Ms. Lawson, and if you want to contact her, you may still contact her. But uh, Mr. Andrew, before you leave, can you just give us your phone number as well? And if, uh, if we have questions for you, we can always also get across to you. So can you please just give us your phone number? Okay, my phone number is 80 384097. So like I said, any areas of collaboration, we are open. We want to uh, work with you to see how we can ensure that every child out there, every parent advances education for, uh, for, for the young ones. Thank you very much. Um, one of our board members will give the appreciation later, so you'll be appreciated then, and um, the appreciation will be extended to your management. Thank you very much. Without wasting time, I want to go to the question and answer time. Um, we have looked through your questions, and from this end, um, I'll be asking the questions, but if you have further questions, please, you can put them on the chats. Be rest assured that my team, they're working together to extract the questions. And um, we have tried to also harmonize the questions because some of you are asking similar questions. So same time, we have harmonized the questions. So I have almost about 15 questions here. And I'm going to start um, with Ms. Bumi Lonsin. The first question is for you, ma'am. Uh, do you have a branch in product courts? And if not, how can those in product court have access to your products. Number two, please do you take bare land worth millions as security for a loan? Let me start with the first two questions. I'll be taking them one after the other. Ms. Bumi Lonsin, you have the floor, man. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, really. Um, I also want to say thank you to Alera. That was such a powerful presentation and aligned so much to why we at EDFIN are doing what we do, you know, that human potential that we talked about, realizing it's making Nigeria truly great. Thank you. So, Quarter Court, um, currently we are a state microfinance bank. We are licensed to operate in Lagos State. So, typically, most of our clients are those who have their base in Lagos State. For Quarter Court, currently we do not offer that service. In fact, we've had um, when I look at the other areas that we've had demand from, they are actually Port Harcourt as well as um, Abuja and Ugu State. So CBN is currently working on removing geographic definitions for microfinance banks. So once that is done, we would be able to serve across the whole country. We don't have to have physical branches. In fact, FCMB is also one of our bankers and we have corresponding banking relationship with them. So through that, we can use all their branches for our banking services. And now that we have a lot of online platforms to apply for a loan, process it, we would be able to serve people outside of Lagos State. But for now, at least I believe for this year, it will only be Lagos State. But keep looking at our website, there are a lot of resources that I feel that 
schools all over Nigeria will benefit from. Then yes, for um, their land as security, yes, we take uh, property as well for security for your collateral. If the collateral has to have some sort of title, um, so and then the location, what we do is value the land and compare it to the amount of loan that you want. So, but it doesn't have to have full title. We know that CFO is difficult, but if it has it, it's all the best, be better. But you should have at least maybe a deed of assignment. You will check, do the land search to make sure that it's not under acquisition or any government um, encumbrance and so on. So that's what we, we sort of do. So we accept um, collateral. Thank you very much, ma'am. Uh, the next question here, apart from the bundle plan, are there other cost reduced device to work e-learning in, in rural areas where power supply is a challenge? Another question because of time. Yeah. Uh, please, what happens when a child exhausts his, his or her bundle for the specu speculated period or speculated period? Thank you. So two questions now. So for the rural area, that's why we added the solar panel. That solar panel is only 3,000 Naira. It costs 3,000 Naira. And it connects directly to the phone. So you phone, you plug it in um, and then put it out in the sun and your um, device is fully charged. So that solar panel, I think, is about 3,000 Naira, if I recall. So that's what we've done for the rural area. I know that um, also some governments are also looking at solar radio so that they can transmit over radio to do t um, lessons. And then if there's no light, they have um, that solar device. So that's what we've added for that. For the bundle, if they exhaust the bundle, they have to buy more. Um, but we estimated that a, a student needs three gig per month on average for, for, for um, for the lessons, especially where if they are not using video, so it's just basically the teacher can call in over Zoom like this um, without using the video. Um, the teacher is the one using the video. The child does not have to um, show their own video as well all the time, or they are downloading videos and things like that. So we estimate three gig is adequate for a child per month. That's what, well, if they finish it, you, you subscribe for more or allocate more. So you can allocate, yeah, in fact, the, um, the data to the phone every single day. So maybe if you want to ration it, you can now say, okay, I'm only giving you 500 MB per day or something like that. So that's how um, we manage it. There's a whole platform that the school administrator has that now allocates data. You need to see consumption, what they're using. You can even block sites that they should not go to so that... Um, it is it is safe for children's use. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Ma. Two questions for you again. Do you have coverage towards infrastructure upgrade, that is, hostel or classroom expansion? How does it run? Another question, Ma. Thank you, Ma, for your first presentation. Ma, what are your interest charges like? I've been expecting that question anyway. Thank you, Ma. <laughs> I too would have been shocked if nobody asked about interest rates. <laughs> so, for hostel and infrastructure, we do cover. Although I will tell you that our maximum first time loan is 10 million naira. So, it depends on what you are building. Um, although during this COVID, we hesitate to fund buildings now because you will see that. Um, during COVID, buildings are not one of the uh, parameters for going back to school. Putting people, you see that even those who have a uh, boarding school and uh, those who ask not to resume school because there's a higher risk of infection. So typically during this time, we don't fund the um, infrastructure. But when we do, it's up to 10 million. And what we advise schools to do is to build in phases because we know that 10 million may not build the entire thing you want. So you take your 10 million, you build it up to a stage, they can start using a portion of the building and then you repay, you take another loan until you finish the entire um, building. For interest rates, I will first say that interest rates are affordable. 
um, typically interest rates for microfinance banks are more expensive than commercial bank loans. But what we've done is to structure it in a way that makes it easier for you to repay. So um, our loans for tuition loans range from 2.5% all the way to 4%, depending per month, per month, depending on how we assess your risk. So that's what um, our interest rates are. But for schools, for instance, we allow you pay timely. So if we give you a loan, for instance, now, you don't have to pay until the next term. You don't repay the principal or interest. It accumulates, not that it's free, it accumulates onto that term because we know that at the beginning of the term, that's where you're collecting your school fees. Then you now pay next term. So we structure it in such a way that it is termly and not every month so that you're not struggling for looking for cash every month. So we typically look at affordability. One of the things that I see a lot of our schools do is that they look at the interest rate. So let's say you take a 1 million Naira loan and let's say the interest is 10, 10% or even let's say 20, which is 200,000. You now divide it per head per child. So you need to look at, okay, how much is that extra costing you per head per child? And can the school fees cover it? So when you do it that way, you will see that it tends to be more affordable. And then what, what we notice some of our schools do to cover those costs is that they could introduce things like, um, well, some schools even just introduce development levies, but um, you know, like lesson, extra lesson. So by the time you are doing extra lesson of 500 Naira per child, it already covers your interest rate. So those are some of the innovative ways to look at covering the cost of borrowing. Thank you very much. Um, I have another question here before I move to Mr. Tobler. I'll pause a while. I'll ask uh, Mrs. Alero uh, some questions, but before I do that, Please take this question. What are the requirements that will help one assess loans, especially from the federal government? We want to ensure we take all questions, but I can still ask you the same question anyway. That is the, what, that's what the person asks. So what to ask you, man? Would you like yes, to discuss yeah. about that now or? Okay. Um, for, yeah. So for, for government loans, Typically, it's the same requirement as a bank. Um, I know that for the NISTRA loan, they eventually removed the need for guarantors and collateral. But, you know, the amounts were actually small. So I think they were the maximum. The highest I've seen that anybody got was 3 million naira. Typically, it's about 500,000 naira. But for us, we look as you must have been in school, as I said, for a full session so that we can know how many students, what are, is your income level. And um, basically, those, those are the major requirements. The other things are around the amount of the loan. So what is your collateral? Do you have a guarantor? And I saw that um, some people said they wanted their session to be their guarantor. That is acceptable to us if their session agrees, that is. So that's what um, we currently do, yeah. All right, thank you very much. Uh, this question is for Mrs. Alero. Well, let me just ask because that's the, that's the, that's the question from someone. Um, the person says you kindly explain public school in UK so people don't think that they are government schools. Can I repeat? Okay. Uh, Sarah, can you unmute? Unmute. Okay. Okay. Unmute. Yes. yes. Okay, that's a good question. I got the question. And it's, yes, you know the United Kingdom, the English have a peculiar sense of humor. They know how to say one thing and they mean something else. Public schools in, in the United Kingdom, in England, are actually private schools of excellent quality. So they are private schools. And, and, and you pay, you pay, um, significant school fees to be able to attend but more and more they also have a lot of scholarships and they have ways of ensuring that it's not only the wealthy that come to those schools they have actually made a lot of progress in ensuring that their intake is more it's cutting across the strata of society but it, they mean when they say public in England they mean private and what was important about the point that I raised is because most of them were Church of England schools, 
rooted in religion. They were not secular. And that was the main point. But they are um, well, well funded, well um, structured schools. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I have another question here. I'm just the questions are just coming in. But um Mrs. Uh Bumi Lawson and uh Mr. Alero, I wouldn't mind if you can put your phone numbers on the chat. I'm having a lot of questions. They are, they, are, they are asking me for your phone numbers. Maybe you can put it on the chats. That will save me some questions here. Yeah. So please, number. you can put your yes. phone numbers on the chats. And if you want to call, no, you have it on your, in your presentation. Can that person also ask, can we have the presentation? Yes, we can have the presentation. There's need for us to collaborate. And I want to, we have, we, we, we are going to also put this on YouTube. So that you can also listen to it again and again, and also consult them when necessary. Um, if you notice, FCMB spoke about collaboration. Ms. Long also spoke about collaboration. We also like you to collaborate with ACSI Nigeria, especially uh, member schools. I've seen a lot of questions here. Can ACSI guarantee us, um, can be a guarantor? The truth is, an association by law cannot guarantee. We cannot guarantee. But because you are a member school, you are, financial, you are financially committed to ACSI Nigeria, you can be recommended. By God's grace, we recommend you to everything because that is the area we think we can also play our part as members. And that is why if you have not joined ACSI Nigeria, I want to also encourage you to be a member. Let's partner together. Apart from partnering together, Mrs. Alera also spoke about the kingdom mandate so that we can all fulfill the mandate together of raising a godly generation, a godly seed. May the Lord help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, another question for Mrs. Alero. It is very rare for the government to promote private schools. It is very rare for government to promote private schools, pupils, and students in outdoor programs like quiz and debates to boost boldness in them. How can we collaborate to show to showcase these young ones before it becomes formidable to influence their world, especially Christian virtues? I don't know whether you get that. Well, I'm going to take a shot. And if I, if I don't answer it properly, maybe the, the, the person who asked the question will confirm. I will say, you don't wait for government to do it. Exactly. Do it, do it yourself. Just come together. That's the power of collaboration, the power of association. You raise, you have quiz, powerful, well-branded, impactful quiz, quizzes that, that, that society can't ignore. You can do it. Uh, and I think that's, that, that's what I'll just say. Just Thank you, you very know, much. Please. A question for you again. Can you recap the acronym for THINK, T-H-I-N-K? Um, oh. We're rounding up this session in the next um, five minutes, but let's, let's, let's just go ahead, right THINK. Okay, think. I've, what I did, I actually responded on the chat, so I've typed it out there, but T for technology in this new um, post-COVID new world, the new normal, technology is king. It's going to be, play such a key, um, key role. H is hard work. Uh, it's not going, we're not going to be given anything on a, on a silver platter. You're going to work for it, and we are all have to work hard for it. I is for innovation. Again, we are in a world where innovation is playing a very critical role. We all know that word, innovation. N is for network, the power of your network. And that's why ACSI is so important, the association. You can make it formidable, you can make it powerful, you can make sure that your voice is strong, you can amplify your sound, you can have impact because of your coming together. What's the power of the network? Who's your tribe? Who are you running with? That's what the network is about. Non-negotiable, it can also mean non-negotiable collaboration. Honestly, Major ships are done by people who collaborate. And the last is knowledge. We have to acquire knowledge about the new ecosystem that is evolving. It's not business as usual. And the more knowledgeable you are, the more impactful you become. So think. Thank you very much. I see I have about four people asking for your phone numbers. Uh, we, put, we, put, we, put, phone we put numbers. our phone number, we put it, I put the phone number on the chat. Okay, Ms. Lawson, do you have it on the chat, please? I see our people. Yeah. On the chat, I put the phone number and email address, and in fact, my own personal email address as well. So, 
Thank you well, very I much. Put, actually, I wouldn't mind putting email because it may be easier for me to get. I would prefer <laughs> emails. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Bumi, for highlighting that. All right, I think I'm going to round up with these two questions for Mrs. Alero. Um, I, I, I'm going to ask my assistant to put up her email address, so that will be because she's very good at responding to emails, much better than I'm good, Thank but she's even better. So Thank you very much. Two questions for you, before round up. Yes. Um, Thank you, Mrs. Aida Otobo. Ma, as we ignite our children to be on fire and become nation builders, how do we manage the home factor that could be a challenge for most of them? And finally, great presentation, Mrs. Alero, really inspired. I wonder how we safeguard against losing our Christian ethos, just like schools in England have especially lost theirs in public school. Is it what being historically Christian? Okay. Um, can you hear me? Am I back on? Am I, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, ma'am. Okay, lovely. Yes, can I take can the can I you. take the second question first? Thank that, you. Okay. Yeah. Right. So can you repeat that second question again? Thank you very much. Great presentation, Mrs. Alero. Really inspired. I wonder how we safeguard against losing our Christian ethos, just like schools in England have, especially the public schools. Is it what being historically Christian? That's the question, isn't it? Okay, that's, it's a great question. It's a great question, and my response will be this. I prefer to have a kingdom mindset than to have a Christian mindset. And the kingdom mindset is what God wants us to have. We are not meant to be religious. We are meant to be spiritual. And it's being spiritual that enables you to be prophetic. Being spiritual enables you to understand what the future has in store. You're able to interpret and interpret trends. And you're able to build what you need to see now to ensure that when, those, when what you're seeing as trends emerges, you are well positioned. We, the interesting thing I'd like, like to correct, quite a number of public schools are still very Christian. You go there, they have their, their services, they have assemblies, they say prayers at assemblies, they, they, they encourage church going. So do not couch all public schools under the same umbrella. And how do we make sure we must not lose our kingdom ethos or King Christian ethos? And it's for you as, as the association, as members of the association, to make sure you build a defense and you ensure that you don't lose it. But not losing it does not, not walking in your Christian ethos or kingdom ethos does not mean that you now do not become relevant nationally. And that is what the message, one of the key messages is you have to become relevant. You have to come to the table, sit at the table and be consulted when matters arising are being considered. It, that is where Jesus sat at the table. Jesus drove change. He didn't wait for it to happen. He instigated it. He made it happen. He took responsibility for making it happen. And so if we have his character and nature, We've got to be disruptors because that was his DNA. We've got to be builders of communities, builders of states, builders of nations. That was his DNA. So I hope that answers the question. It's, and, and, and what is happening now as we're perceiving is that there is a people arising and it may, it may be few in number, but the numbers are increasing. So watch the space. God is doing something and it's asking each and every one of us to play our part and our role because Nigeria, we cannot see the Nigeria of God's dream and our dreams if we do not shift our mindset, craft a new narrative and execute differently. Thank you. Then the Very first much. question, it's how right. do you manage parents? There's always, when you're going through transformation, there's always a tension. Let me use the imagery again of the butterfly. As the butterfly is becoming, as the caterpillar is becoming a butterfly, it goes into a state of the pupae in the middle. 
that state is a that state is a is a place of contention, is a place of conflict, is a place, and, and you see the, the butterfly emerging, is struggling. That struggling is painful. So when you are transforming anything, schools, whatever, it's never as easy as you would like to be, to make it to be. So teach, you have to carry your parents along, but get ready for tension. But as a transformation agent, you don't run away from tension. And that is why it is key for those who understand, it. when we worked with um, education support system, DFID, education support sector program in Nigeria, then you have to look at transformation of a school in a holistic way. It's to students, what they're learning, the curriculum, the teachers, and parents, and the community. You cannot separate all. So the, 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 the building a community around your parents and giving them the information they need so that they walk with you on this journey is key. Don't start, don't, don't, don't embark on significant journeys of change without carrying your parents along. And there's a, methodology, there's a methodology to do it. And once parents get it, they will walk with you, they will run with you, and they will applaud what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate you, man. We just have about two minutes for this session, and um, I want to appreciate Edwin. I want to appreciate uh, Mrs. Salero. I want to appreciate Mr. Edward from First SCMB. Thank you. I would like to invite the director of ACSI Nigeria to say just one or two things to the questions, after which I will invite Pastor Koyo Rapu for the last session of the program. Mr. Dakiyemiju, over to you, ma'am. Mr. Dakiyemiju, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Pastor Shergo. Um, I, I really want to appreciate our two speakers. I, I can't thank you enough. I, for the information, the challenge to arise and all of that. And we are so grateful. Like I said in my opening um, remarks, what we need to do is go home, go back and work on this information. Somebody asked a question about um, collaboration on um, quiz and all of that. And Ella just talked to us about collaboration. And one of the things that we need to do is at zonal levels, local government levels, state levels, there are SCSI is looking for people that will work together to come together and put things together. This is the word together, stronger together. That's collaboration to say, let's work on this quiz. Whether it's spelling bee, whether it's math, whether it's um, science, STEM, whatever area. And when you are doing something, please let others see what you are doing and let's come together. This is a need. It's a challenge that we got today. Please, let's respond to this challenge. We need each other. This is an assignment that we have from God and she has so much giving it to us in such a way by the power of the Holy Spirit that our response should be, let's do quiz together, whatever level of quiz you want to do. And then biblically integrated, that's what we're talking about. I want to suggest and say, it's not even a suggestion, it's something that we know we want to do. We're working on um, our curriculum as ACSI. We need volunteers, we've said it at all levels. This is a big meeting. We need volunteers. SSI is asking for volunteers. Please volunteer your time, all that you can put in place, your ideas. And the last one is spiritual formation that would uh, graduate the projects. You know, that's, that what she gave us, what Alero gave to us is a, a product, a graduate that will go out and it's all just when we listen, we need to go back and listen to this. And like uh, Pastor Shepard said, it's going to be in the YouTube. We can get it again. Who is that product that graduates from your school? Who is that child that you are raising, that I'm raising? Who is that child that ACSI is raising? So let's go back. Your vision, when we put it right and say, this is the child that goes out, 
how relevant, but all of the points in spite of our vision can be put together as maybe a material, the spiritual formation process, that these are all the things, and I'm taking notes, these are all the points that should go into that child that will leave that school, that school, that school. And when we've done that, having prayed into them, prayer is key, that we stress that a lot in this time, then we will be confident that I have passed through the stage, I have done this, and I'm giving glory to God that I'm sending for this child to go and transform the nation. The Lord bless all of us as we go back to do our part. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you very much. Um, once again... Just uh, one more point, sir, about parents. For those of you that have been at Kingdom School Institute, start a parenting institute in your school. If you, if you want to learn about it, ask the ACSI office. A parenting institute will help you. It will help us a lot. And how to run it as the ACSI office. Thank you. Okay, maybe I should quickly say, if you want to also send a mail to ACSI Nigeria, take note, info at acsinigeria.org. Info at acsinigeria.org. I repeat again, info at acsinigeria.org. Um, there's no question for FCMB now. However, I would like him to give his parting word before we invite the third speaker to round off today's program. FCMB, Mr. Andrew, you have the floor. Mr. Andrew, you can unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh... <clears throat> Okay, I just want to wish everyone uh, the best, uh, most especially uh, from FCMB, the vision and mission of uh, your individual schools and collectively as a body will definitely be achieved. And as you strive towards attaining, building uh, the kids of the future, the leaders of tomorrow in a Christian way and uh, more especially in a religious way, uh, we definitely hope that um, that mission, that vision, will definitely be achieved. Uh, once again, thank you for having me here. Uh, once again, thank you for giving uh, FCMB the opportunity to collaborate and sponsor uh, this event. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, without wasting time, I want to invite Pastor Nkoyo Rapu for this final session. And I trust God that it's going to be very impact. I mean, it's going to be very impactful. And the Lord will turn our school around for good in Jesus' name. Pastor Uncle Yorapu, over to you, ma'am. Amen. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Shego. Um, let me start by welcoming everyone again, even though we're at the end of, virtually the end of this webinar seminar. And then I would like to thank uh, Mrs. Lawson for her very informative uh, presentation. Let me also thank Mrs. Alero Otobo for her powerful, insightful, and spiritual charge. I want mm. to also acknowledge very specially Mrs. Aki Emiju, uh, director, and um, thank her for always being so accommodating and um, wanting to keep innovating. I thank uh, and of course commend uh, Pastor Shego is indefatigable. Uh, the board members who are also here, I want to commend you, uh, Pastor Funto, and anybody else who's still on, and uh, Mr. Mekandu, whom we called in quite at last minute and um, did his best to assist us. Um, FCMB, I think they've had their slot, and to also thank them for responding at short notice. And now to my, what I would like to share. Um, I'll take it on from what Ms. Otobo said. Her own uh, topic was the mandate. I think understanding the kingdom mandate. And knowledge is power. Um, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Knowledge and spiritual conviction provides the impetus for movement. Early on in the, uh, earlier on this week, on Monday to be precise, a scripture leapt out at me when I was in my morning devotion. 
And the scripture was on the sound of the trumpets, uh, Numbers chapter 1. So mine is to bring a wrapping up with uh, maybe additional spiritual content and direction. So the scripture, I think, was um, um, Numbers, um, Numbers 10, I believe, but we don't need to go there now. It had to do with the sounds of the trumpets, and one of the sounds would mean that Israel had to take its formation forward. And what it says, in essence, is it's a time to move on. It's a time to break the trajectory of where we've been and to break camp and move forward. So the trumpet heralded God's... Uh, hold on a second. You can close the door. Thank you. The trumpet was God's sound saying it's time to break camp and move forward. And I think it was Mrs. Otobo who mentioned that we've camped on this mountain for long enough. It's time to move forward. The, the essence and importance of Christian education couldn't be more needed than where we are now. We are in a world full of darkness. And Christian education gives us the opportunity to, to graduate students who affect the transformational landscape of a nation and globally. Yes. So it is a wonderful privilege to own schools at this time. Yes. I am a product of a missionary school. My father was, my grandfather was, and that's the story of many of us in this age bracket. So the missionaries came and utilized their resources to transform people who transform the landscape of nations. And that's also what uh, my sister Lero's presentation sought to highlight. Now, I want to talk to you about financing the mandate. So the mandate is that we are called to propagate the gospel through Christian education. That is such a privilege, but it also brings with it an accompanying sense of responsibility, which means that every child that goes through your school has to become a David, has to become a Solomon, has to become a Daniel has to become a Deborah, has to become an Esther. They must come out yeah. affecting yeah. change. And the pulpit we have is in every area of society. So, but this mandate requires financing. I want to read you two scriptures. One of them, Deuteronomy 8, 18. And the King James Version says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. Why? That he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. What is the covenant? Thy kingdom come on earth, thy will be done. And in our segment, it is for his kingdom of education, transformation through education to, be, to, to affect the earth. That's going to require financing. I, I had God. occasion to discuss much, and work with God. them. That's why I couldn't do a power. I had uh, occasion to meet with uh, Pastor Shegum and I looked through the financials of ACSI. And um, one of the ways we thought that we could raise finances to run the secretariat the secretariat is the bedrock of all that we are doing. I realized that they were working with acute shortage of resources. Let me read you my second, my second point. So my first point is there is a mandate. The mandate is global. The mandate will reach out to bring transformation nationally and globally by the way we train the students, disciple them and deploy them into the world. However, that mandate will require resources. And they pay, I noticed that in ACSI, well, we've been very cautious about speaking about resources. But we can't be cautious because God needs our resources and our resources that we give are key to our being blessed. Some people say we are in a farming, and in a farming, we don't have anything to give. I don't know about people who talk about tithes and offering. God is actually calling us to give our all in terms of skills, 
resources, time. And that brings me to collaboration. We want to collaborate with ACSI Secretariat because we are stronger together. I have looked at the budget and I thought to myself, we need also to educate our member schools on corresponding responsibility. You know, the widow of Zarephath had just a little bit of bread left to eat. But the prophet did not have mercy on her because in her giving, that was God's way of unlocking wealth. And he will unlock wealth if we have the willingness to give because it's in, in his interest to propagate the gospel of his kingdom through education. Now, we, can't, we want to run the secretariat efficiently and that requires our collaboration. The widow gave to Elijah what she had. Elijah said, give me first and then you can have yours. God could have fed Elijah at the brook carries. He was already doing so. But God caused the brook to dry up because he wanted to bless the widow of Zarephath. He wanted to give that woman more than enough. So I don't subscribe to the fact that in a farming, we don't sow. You, we give to God, not because we have plenty, but because we have an understanding of his mandate and we give regardless of what we have. Everybody has a seed that they can sow. I will close by reading you a scripture. The scripture is taken from 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 1 to, to 5, NIV version. Then King David said to the whole assembly, my son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The task ahead of him is great because this palatial structure is not for man but for the Lord God. With all my resources, I have provided for the temple of my God. Gold for the gold work, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, wood for the wood, as well as onyx for the settings, turquoise, stones of various colors, and all kinds of fine stone and marble. All of these I have provided in large quantity. Besides, in my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God. Over and above everything I have provided for this holy temple. He goes on 3,000 talents of gold, 7,000 talents of refined silver for the overlaying of the walls and buildings, for the gold work and the silver work and all the work to be done by the craftsmen. Now, who is willing to consecrate, consecrate himself today to the Lord? Verse 9, the people rejoiced at the willing response of their leaders, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. David the king also rejoiced. I want to close by encouraging the member schools and by telling you that God's mandate requires financing. If we would commit our schools, like Peter gave his boat for Jesus to use. When Jesus got into Peter's boat, he used the boat, but he blessed Peter. But what I'm talking to you about also is a willingness, a willingness to collaborate with the secretariat, a willingness to bring your talents and skills and resources. Let us even start by contributing our subscription without compulsion, without having to be reminded. It's a willingness. David had a task. He was handing over the baton to Solomon. Solomon was to build, but David assembled what he, um, he, he handed over to Solomon what he had amassed, what he had saved for the temple. ACSI is a temple we are called to build. God no longer dwells in temples built with hands. Yes, but through ACSI, we are building temples, human temples that will carry God's glory and presence and transform the world. 
it requires resources. And if we will give our schools and our resources as boats for the Lord to use, he will guide us to cast fish without toil. He doesn't need us to toil. But there is something that provokes God. His laws don't change. Give and it shall be given unto you. Full measure, pressed down, running over, shall men give to your bosom. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And um, we will, moving forward, charge you some token for the webinar seminars. I want to thank Mrs. Otobo and Mrs. Lawson especially. If we had to pay them for what we've learned today, we wouldn't be able to afford it. And so we have suggested as a subcommittee on the board that our members now at the point where we should pay a token. We don't need to call. If we call in the banks, it should be an extra. But we, like David and Solomon, like David, must take charge of our father's mandate and provide for it. And you watch, I challenge you, watch by the covenant of the Most High God and see if your schools will not take a change. Because God knows that if he prospers your schools, the secretariat will do its work and the mandate would, would expand. Thank you very much and God bless you.